In this lesson, we will use the age attribute from the growth effect to drive the primitives on the sphere and do some, some nice revealing effect with it. After the attribute transfer, we should add a point wrangle or an attribute wrangle. And we just need to write a small line of code. So we say at CD equals to channel float or maybe channel ramp actually. We need to specify the ramp name. I will just say ramp and then to have the full range of the age, we need to divide the age by life. So what this line of code does, it says that you set the CD to whatever age divided by life is and put it inside the ramp. So right now, um, if we play this, uh, we can maybe we need to reverse this actually. Yeah, we have an issue here because we didn't transfer the age and life. So we just need to set age and life here. And yeah, if we have a look, we have age, CD, life and position. So that's what we want. Uh, and right now, as you can see, um, the particles or the primitives uh, begin to have, um, you know, some gradient over it. So we just need to, to change this ramp accordingly, template the growth just to see how it looks. Okay, and switch this to primitives. So what we want to do here, we want to have a black sphere starting with some, you know, some black uh, primitives that transfer to white like this. And then maybe we'll, we want to have also another gradient, but not so powerful because if you have a look, this is, this is value of one. Uh, here we can say 1.15 maybe and here we say 0 0.6 and if we go further you can see that we have an interesting gradient where it's more powerful here then it goes almost to black again then it's white again and goes to, to black again. We see two gradients and the first one is more powerful then the particles die and everything turns to black again. So this is a really nice spreading effect. Of course we can we can tweak this ramp however we want. Maybe add another black one here just to have we just name this node set age ramp. And now we would like to move the primitives around. Let's do a quick test. We can drop a primitive sop and because we have the facet node here, every primitive it's not stick to one another. We tick do transformation and just as a test we can have um, I have them rotate maybe to 60 degrees. As you can see each primitive rotates 60 degrees. Um, maybe we can just pass this uh, so we see it better. I know that I can control the rotation, I can also control the scale and other parameters as well. But I think I just need the, a small rotation. Right now, of course, you, you see that the primitives, all the primitives rotate. So we just need to use this mask to make them rotate where it's white. In order to do that, uh, we should use a, a point bob or an attribute bob. Uh, so let's first create uh, an attribute VOP for the mask, just to have more control over it. We can name it mask, dive inside, um, maybe we can put a ramp parameter. We could do this in code as well. Oh, sorry. So we, we plug it into CD. And what we can do, we can also use a power function. This is like a contrast uh, and just go and promote the parameter. So this way we have the this exponent from here. We have it outside. Mm, and also I think for the ramp we just need to use a spline ramp. So you see it's very similar to what we have here. Uh, okay, so now Oh yeah, I took the 
the position I need to take the CD. Sorry for that. So yeah, I'll just leave this for now like this because I don't know the effect of it and I can tweak it later. Also before going further, we should add some colors. We do another attribute vop. And here we can measure the length of the color. And add a ramp. Ramp parameter. And this time we need the ramp to be a color ramp. So we can go with, um, with some blue color here. maybe some white blue at the beginning then some darker blue and then it, it fades to black or yeah we can add also some dark blue here Again, we can tweak this all day long. So we say here color, here we say rim rotation maybe, and this is the mask. So now we have the color, the rotation and the mask, and we can take all of those three and work them out into uh, another attribute VOP. So we just plug this in the first, this one in the second, and this one in the third. We dive inside. And here we need to create something a bit more complex because we need to read the parameters of, of each point, I mean of each, each input. So let's see how we can do that. First we need to import the mask. So we have a node that says import point attribute. And here we know that the mask is a third input and we need the color attribute. We can say here uh, import mask. Then we need to import the position of the primitive. This is in the second input and it's uh, the position. And now we need the mix and also maybe we want to, to displace along the normals. So we need uh, this place along normal. Okay, so let's sort everything out. This is the mask. We want to add a ramp to it, maybe to further control it. We say spline ramp. And of course, this is the output. So this is what, what this node out, outputs here. We'll take the displacement first. Plug the, the initial position, plug the normals. I hope we have normals. And then uh, we just plug this into position. Of course, right now it does nothing. So if we just scale this up, we see that we have the, the everything is displaced like before. Um, and what we need to do is to plug this displacement into a mix. This is like, um, a mask between two layers, let's say. So we have the, the displacement and then we have the original position and the bias is actually the mask. So we use the, the mask that we have and plug it into position. Now something happens. Yeah, we need to, to use this because the ramp was outputting nothing. And now what happens is that we just displace the points that are not black. So this is really nice, of course. If the mask is white, the displacement is bigger. If it's gray, it's not so big. And if it's black, it's it doesn't happen at all. Uh, we need to promote this parameter. And of course, we also need some rotation here. We remember that this is where we import the rotation. We also need a mix. 
and mix the rotation of the primitives with the original rotation and the same mask we need again so we just use another ramp maybe we we have to you know to use different parameters for the rotation and for the displacement we use this in the bias again and we need to put this mix into the second input I believe yeah so now um, yeah I made a mistake for the ramp we need to create a ramp from scratch not duplicating it yeah it basically it had the same name so it doesn't work so we go to outside and then we we just put these ramps on the default and right now let's see what happens here okay so everything should work let's just play around with this so this is the the displacement let's put it on zero and um, you see we have some rotation so right now the the black parts are rotating because I reverse the ramp and if we do it like this you can see the the other parts are starting to rotate but I think the actual the mask it's it's inverted so we don't want that let's see what happened here yeah so right now you see that those points get get rotated okay so what what I ended up doing here is uh, I went to the mask and just use it like a normal ramp and the exponent I added uh, on, on 2 so it's not so brutal and then on, on the primitive I rotate them to 200 degrees maybe that's too much let's put 150 and now you see where the mask is white they're heavily rotating maybe it's too much let's use 100 um, and also if we go with the displacement we just need to invert this one okay so we had to to invert the ramps so right now as you can see there's a really nice effect happening um, so the, the particles the primitive starts to appear then there's another wave where where they go almost to the original position there's the next wave where they they appear again but they're not so high up and then they fade out to black again so let's let's do a play blast on this using the also the camera and if we play this real time I think it's it looks really cool and it fades out really nicely next we will create the scan lines and then uh, start making the shaders and setting up the render <laughs> 